Hey everybody and welcome to the first episode of you know really building this business again <laughs> you know like we go through well I've been through so many stages of almost rebuilding this business and I feel like this time I'm in a space where um, I really know where I'm going and I, you know I just want to drop this video and every single Monday we're going to be doing this video where I just talk about where I'm at, um, share some resources with you. For those of you who are, want to build a, a marketing agency, want to build a marketing business um, and share my learnings, tidbits that may support you on your journey. Now, uh, just to give you, this is going to be a fairly long video in terms of just trying to break down some of the things that I've experienced already and then um, driving into where we are right now. So um, back in 2016, I started this business. Um, it wasn't called Story Advantage. It was called Focal Shift Communications. And the idea of the business at that time was to really be a communications company, right? And then it evolved into an agency-like business where we were doing everything from automations, website building to social media. And that and really started without knowing too much. Um, only my experience of what I had studied in uh, online. Really, I'm not a I'm not a student of uh, varsity or we have no degrees. But what I have done was um, during the time that I was traveling and because I'm, I'm an Olympian, I, I, I competed at the Olympic Games and sports really was my main thing um, while working in a, in a different type of business, a family business. And um, I, I, I learned about and predominantly doing marketing. So when, when I, and sales. So when I then decided to leave that business, um, stop with all the sport and got back into and decided to build a business, I was, I learned a lot about how to code, um, how to build websites, um, and then using my marketing knowledge, how to market that. So then once I got back from the Olympic Games into 2016, I then decided that I was going to build this business. And it's been a, a roller coaster of, of, of a ride. And really I grew we grew within the first year pretty fast um we had about like five or six staff complement at the time starting with just me and then and i really hated it I, I didn't enjoy having to manage people um but if you really want a big business it's just something you have to do and um you may get people that come in that can manage people better than you but as a starting point, you have to manage people. Um, and regardless, even if you're not really dealing with them day to day, you still have to manage people. So understanding that was something that I wasn't used to and didn't want. So what I want, so then what I did was I decided to create a more of a consultancy, something that can be um, run by maximum three people um, where we mainly control the admin side of business and then we either outsource to various partners that would be doing some of the the stuff um, one of the things I really hated doing was building a website and uh, um, you know I have various people that I now connect with that do that for me um, and are considered part of the team they're considered um, you know that actually drives the team up even though the internal team is only really three people um, the I have an external complement of well over 12 people so um, that I share, you know, work with. Regardless, uh, where we at at this moment in time is really at what is that big idea? Um, I struggled for a while because at some point I was kind of reeling, just struggling to find my place and where I wanted to actually play and decided to become a story brand guide and uh, it's really been, it's changed a lot for me. It's changed a lot of the way that I do business, of how I speak to people, about how the, the content that I create and about how I essentially help people, how I niche. 
my niche is not really, even though we do do all of the things ranging from ads all the way through to email marketing, what we actually really do and the main focus of the business is around strategy and around creating a narrative that is clear. So we really stick down to the messaging portion and giving a company that baseline set of communications that they would use for all their marketing collateral. And it really makes it really easy. I mean, if, if you're watching this and you probably, you're thinking about creating a, a design agency or some sort of agency, um, when I'm saying design agencies, but that's already assuming that that's where your focus is in design. And mine is predominantly in that messaging so I would really suggest picking one of those places and, and really keep drilling down because it's it's because in the digital world it's quite vast. But one thing that I realized is that a key skill is being able to write, and um, that is where my focus is currently as a in my person. But for the business, where I really want to drive it is my end goal. My that B hag is be able. When I say be hag, it's really a big, hairy, audacious goal. And really, it's, it's, it's about being able to create a platform where thought leaders, coaches, business owners can go and build out their sales funnel without having to worry about all the techie stuff. Really, the goal is create a sales funnel at a push of a button. Um, and understanding where my place is and all of that and understanding the strategy and that's really where we're going to build this whole application. And what I've done over a period of time is I've accumulated the various, let's call it platforms that will talk to each other and allow someone to be able to actually manifest this entire thing through absolute, by, by not even touching a line of code. They, they just really just speak into, because we're driving into a voice operating world, um, speak into the mic, tell it, tell the machine, this is what I want to create. This is, this is um, who I am. This is what my business does. And in a very specific way, and the machine then builds out all that marketing collateral that allows you as the business owner or your team to very quickly just edit a couple of things, move things around, and voila, you've got your entire sales funnel. Now, that is a very big ask because um, not many of these applications speak to each other. I mean, there's lots of one all-in-one applications that don't necessarily bear fruit, but where I'm looking at is really connecting with these specialized platforms and then using that to create the, 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 the sales funnel. Now, some of you might be asking, what is a sales funnel? Now, that is in a whole different video. You can check on the links below what a sales funnel is. But for now, because this is really just documenting the whole journey and just talking about where we are at the moment and that every single Monday, I'm going to be sharing as a lot of my learnings and what's happened um, and these videos won't really, they won't be longer than five minutes. Um, but for now, for this moment in time, just to give you a bit of context on who I am, what I do. So my name is Marlon August and I am a marketing consultant for Story, at Story Advantage. And uh, what we do is we help brands get really super clear on what their marketing message is. You see, most businesses, they don't know how to communicate in the best way for their customers to really feel like they've been drawn into a story. And what I do is I help them to create a compelling story around their brand that really hones, their, their, hones in their ideal customer and it helps them make the right choice. Now, these, there's, there's lots of, I mean, story itself is something that is really uh, being uncovered a lot more and more these days. A lot of people are talking about, talk, talk about your story, talk about your story. And essentially where I'm at is in the opposite side of that is that nobody really wants to hear your story. They want to hear their story. So when I'm pointing here, I'm actually talking to you. 
Um, you know, and, and even while I'm talking about this, my, my goal is to really share the stories that will help you be able to put yourself in there and then being able to create a really positive result. The other side of this is that I want to share this so that I have something that explains the journey that because, you know, you go so far um, doing things, learning things. And it's a great way to just go back and just either just take in those learnings or to just share with other people so that they can fast track this. And I'm doing this totally for free where a lot of people will be charging for that type of content. So either way, when you are thinking about a design agency, whatever sort of agency, I don't know why I'm stuck on design because I'm bad at design maybe, but um, the, the, the core element of this is really to put things out there. And also, you know, if you are a freelancer, if you are somebody that is um, looking to get some exposure, web development, um, if you're a great uh, coder or something, you know, reach out, connect with me and we, let's see if we can do some business. Um, so where we are at this moment in time, in terms of the journey of that entire plan, right, is to be able to, well, where we are at the moment is that I've, I've obviously, I know how the process works. I've run through it with so many clients and we've had some really awesome results. And obviously there's ups and downs, right? In the, in the, in the journey of building this. And um, one of those things is having consistency, having consistent clients. Um, because, you know, sometimes your journey comes to an end with one and they being who you've been focusing on all this time. And then now you've got to go out and, farm out some get some new work and there's that's two parts in that the first is that you know obviously you got to keep your lead generation going and the second is that you also got to have you got to have um faith you know there's a lot of faith that goes into business if you're an entrepreneur you know exactly what i'm talking about because the right people will show up at the right time so you need to have the right faith so that you know, and put yourself out there so that people can actually find you. Um, those are one of my big learnings. And another was really going back to the BHAG is that you can, you have this goal and this goal is enough to scare you. And if you, I mean, while I'm excited, while I was speaking about my BHAG, it freaks me out because honestly, um, I didn't, I've been holding on to this for maybe the last four years. Um, really actually holding on to a bigger idea, which was that I wanted and I want to be known as the $90 billion man. Now that's a very big number. And I, and I had no idea how to get there. But what I eventually did was connect with, because I was kept on telling it to so many people when people, people obviously ask you like, you know, why in business, what do you, why do you do what you do? And I said, you know, to almost everyone, I want to be known as the $90 billion man. And they were like, Oh, geez, this is just a money thing. But actually, it was like, I want to be able to build, I want to be able to help my clients generate $90 billion. What ended up happening was I, I ended up on a show with, with two awesome people, um, uh, Wolf Von Gadam and um, Stephen Levy. And they introduced to me a concept. Um, that of how I can actually reach it, but then looked at it more from the revenue side on from my side, not necessarily how much money I've generated for others, but I latched onto that because it was really interesting. Unfortunately, I do not have the recording. I really wanted to have the recording so I could, I could either piece it here or within the article, but unfortunately I don't. But what I soon will do is have um, both, well, I've already recorded a, an episode with, with Stephen Levy, but I definitely will with uh, Wolf, and he's gonna and he's gonna we're gonna talk about through his process of how he helps brands and how he helps businesses innovate and innovate their process so that they can actually realize their dream. And in that process, it really woke me up, woke me up to exactly what I need to do to be able to build this. And it actually shortened the amount of time because I was like sitting, sitting thinking 10, 20 years ahead. But in actual fact, this thing can be done within, at least have a proof of concept within the next two years. So 
Um, what was really interesting about that is that since holding that in my mind, I have met some extraordinary people that have really added so much value, platforms that I could integrate and, and use together to build this. And it's really phenomenal for where it is right now. It, currently, if you had to look at it, they, I'm using all of them in different parts and still trying to find the right sort of mixes of things. Now, a sales funnel is broken up into a couple of things. It's broken up into ads. It's broken up into um, focus. Well, it depends if you want to go the ad route. But there's content. Then there is your website then, or landing page. Then there is uh, an email sequence that, or something that someone opts into that's an email sequence that feeds them information into um, a sale. Then there's like things like upsells, downsells that could happen. And, you know, it could get really intricate because you want to be able to, re you want to be able to determine the journey from beginning to end for your customer. And if they go through it successfully, then you know that you've got something that works because it works for you 24 seven. You just switch on the ads and it starts working. Now, um, since recently, I have actually built my own few of these things and they're actually working, whereas most of the time I've been focused on, on doing it for my clients and having it work for my clients. But when you have something like that, it sort of works in the background. You don't have to think about it. And that's where I'm at the moment, you know, like things like that is happening for me. Now, the crucial thing, I believe, um, is just taking it right back again to the BHAG is that you got to have a vision. If you don't have a vision, you don't know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, you won't know where you'll end up. And talking about that specific process, I thought, I thought that it's just having that big idea and then working your way and then just reminding yourself of that big idea. But it's not enough. You really need to take it and break it down into micro things. First, you've got to have these like sort of these check-ins, you know, quarterly, maybe um, six months annually. And then you, then you break that down even more into the, the, the weekly. What is it done on the daily that helps me get to these goals? And you, you, you know, you determine those. And what was interesting is that I met another gentleman, which is also another video for another time, because um, I'm going to be documenting that journey as well. Um, is I've been connecting with a gentleman um, that owns a business called A Game Business. Now, A Game Business, they are a coaching company, they are a consultancy, they help, they help businesses get really great in their in, 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 in with their marketing, but mostly now where the focus is going to move to is helping businesses really understand their balance scorecard. Now, what is a balance scorecard? In short, a balance scorecard is just to help you with those. Remember, I was talking about the little steps that one needs to take and then looking at it at a macro level, being able to really determine on that quarterly level where we are and look at it at a number. So if we're looking at the number and it's 86, we know, oh my goodness, we are reaching our goal. We are like 86% there. Um, by the end of the quarter. And then it's just about going back through that and, and tweaking along the way. So I'm going to be working quite closely with uh, KK and the A-game business. And we're going to be talking about that because he's actually going to do me a favor and go through my process. Because what we did in trying to build this big thing is that we tried to, we, we then had to go, we, we thought, let's go, let's go right down to the process because that's what I really know. It's what I really do every single day. So, it was about documenting each and every single thing that we're doing from a process point of view. Now, for those of you who don't know what a process is, it's when you're doing something, I don't know what the technical definition is, but in my brain, a process is when something happens. So when it, so for, for example, if somebody comes into my stream of communication, if somebody um, gets, gets in touch with me, I have a very specific set of things that is done that helps them either make a decision to join me or gives them enough value so that they can, they can do it themselves. And that is the end result of my, of my interaction with people. Um, but 
really like this is something that every business has got to think through. Every business has and needs to document their processes. So what we did was we went right granular, right? But then when we started to think about it, it was like, especially after I got the made aware of the balance scorecard is that I've missed up, I skipped a whole step. I need to actually take it back because some of these processes might be redundant. Some of these things might not even need to be done. They, they might be things that don't even actually contribute to the bottom line because everything in a business has got to contribute to the bottom line. There are those intangibles, I guess, but essentially it's going to contribute to something. And if you're not measuring it, you will never know. So you've got to measure. And the balance scorecard is your ticket to doing that. Because once you've developed your balance scorecard, then you can start thinking about your systems and then you get to your processes and really detail everything out. So, so I've got it in parts, right? Where I've, I've got the system, I've been working the system already the last three, three to four years. And I've got the processes that are within that mostly done. So now it's all about just trying to um, get, I'm, I'm starting going a bit back, starting at the balance scorecard. And when I've got that in place, this becomes the metric for change. This becomes the place where I'm now paying attention to 24 seven, well, most of the time. And that tells me when I'm on track. And the beautiful thing of what we have today with technology um, is that, you know, the idea is obviously to integrate the balance scorecard right into applications like monday.com, like um, ClickUp, Trello. And when you have that, because a lot of businesses use that for productivity, but they don't actually, but they're using it for maybe a project. Sometimes they're checking a system. Um, but the idea is you want to be able to do this for the entire business. You want to know whether you guys are hitting those things and revenue goals is not the only thing that one should be paying attention to. Because sometimes you can be hitting the revenue goal and be poor in the other areas and that is not sustainable. So anyway, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you want to build a sustainable business and I would really suggest checking the links below and finding out about um, or probably going back to my website to check out about this balance scorecard right now as of recording this video um, I'm actually working with the team so that we can actually create the the marketing collateral for balance scorecard but um, and so just check the blog um, as I update it and I'll definitely drop some videos as we go through the process for story advantage now, the big trick here is, is not only that, you know, having this goal is one thing because that might just be egotistical. And then, I mean, me coming up with that $90 billion goal was really born from a man called Jay Abram, who's I think at the time was known as the $9 billion man. So I just added a 10 on there, <laughs> you know? So what I'm saying is, um, you know, it might have been full of ego, but I, I, I was so driven by it that it pushed me and to, to, to get to this point where I am right now. And I mean, like since then, since actually coming up with that, I mean, we've generated well over with, uh, with various customers, well over $5 million. Um, so it's like, so I'm, I'm really close to realizing that. Okay, I'm like 85 million off, but uh, not even 85 million. Probably, I'm like well off actually. But the thing is, it, it, it's, really, it's really about just having that focus because before then I had zero. There was nothing, right? So what I wanted to, to, to talk about here is some some other aspects of it it's really being clear on who you are if you're clear on who you are then you'll know what your strengths are you'll know what your weaknesses are and when you know what your what your weaknesses are and your focus is predominantly where i suggest on your strengths then you would need other people to help you in your weakness people that are stronger in, on my side of the world um, I, I suggest, you know, you first of all, I suggest that you go and have a look at the program called um, Wealth Dynamics. Um, I'm definitely, I'll drop a link 
in here that will lead you to my website where you can you can connect you can go directly um, to the the website and sign up um, to Genius U. It's absolutely free. But what I suggest is that you you connect with a company called Wealth Dynamics because you know or do some sort of profiling to some tool that tells you what your your um, strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And obviously, you've got to agree with it. Um, I myself, I am more of a of a creator, what is called in the in the Wealth Dynamics program. I am a creator. I'm this. I'm 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a high. I I think really like all the time, head in the cloud type of guy. I'm uh, I'm not great with the detail, but very fast speaker, very fast um, thinker. And for me, once I've created it in my brain, it works. It is there and it exists. What, um, but for others, you know, other people might be more down to the ground. They, they ask more of the question, how? They might ask more of the question, who's gonna help us with this? And they may be more natural at that. You know, people that are more out in, in front, um, people that are actually more secluded, more introverted in thought. And you get these different types of people that are great with spreadsheets, like I'm horrible with the spreadsheet. And you, 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 you get these various people and you connect with them and you allow them to insert their genius into your business. And this is really where the rubber meets the road. So understanding who you need to combine to, to really help you get the results you're looking for in your business. Um, the other part is when you know who you are, when you know what you want, then it's really about doing the work. Um, you got to just do the work. There's so many things that can distract us, take us away from it. You got to do the work to drill deep on that, on, on, on who you are, drill deep on where you want to go and take the time to make the mistakes of connecting with various people because none of those relationships are always going to work out. Things are going to change. Um, so, so being adaptive to that. And the one other thing that I want to leave in your mind is really around just being good up here. If, if, if this is the space, this is a space that needs the most control. Um, and when I say controls, also by allowing whatever to bother you, but getting over it just as fast so that you can move on. Um, by, by giving yourself permission to fail and not being afraid to by taking certain calculated risks. Um, so this is the thing. Um, this is where I feel I'm at. I mean, I ended up taking quite a big risk um, in some of these applications that I that I bought, for example, where um, I decided, no, I want to not only get these applications, but I don't want to carry heavy costs. So what I did was I put lifetime value into these still beta set, um, tested software um, in the belief that they're going to grow. And the idea there was, you know, and, and I'm working with them so that they can build a really awesome machine that I would love. And they obviously have a track record. I did check them out. But I don't want the ongoing cost. So by buying in at, a, at, at the grandfather price and buying in at, at, the, at the beginning, this gives me the opportunity to not only help them grow, but also build with them and, and, and not have the, the, the heavy costs that, that go into technology. So this is one of the things I had to risk quite a bit of money up front to, to get that reward on the back end and then still have various other things that may carry a monthly cost and a monthly low cost, but it's softwares and stuff that, that will not kill a business where, I mean, really, I, I mean, I'm still going pretty well and we can, and, and I know the, 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 what we can deliver at the end of the day. So this is the thing. If, if you got marketing and you are, if you've got a business and you want to do marketing, I think you, you will have to. At the end of the day, you got to actually have, is broken down into a few things. Strategy, implementation, and then, you know, launch. And when you've got 
the, the strategy down. And that part of that strategy is messaging. And then you, you know exactly what needs to be implemented. What, because the strategy will tell you, we're going to run this type of funnel. We're going to, we're going to journey the people this way. We're going to send them these types of emails. We're going to communicate to them via SMS. We're going to send them WhatsApp. So whatever it is the, that process is for you, whatever it is that journey that you're going to create, my idea is that we're going to create this really at a push of a button, just selecting a couple of things and boom, it comes out, it's ready. You can edit whatever you need to because the machine will not be perfect. Um, and then you can launch within less than um, a few, within days, instead of having to launch within like what it is right now, it takes, sometimes it takes a couple of months to get these things going, um, depending on how, sometimes, I mean, the lowest, the shortest it's been is about three to four days, which is really, really hard work. Um, but really, I, you know, you have to conceptualize all of those things. And, uh, and once you've conceptualized, you've got to build it and then test it. You know, that whole process takes a while, but when you can, when the machine does the whole thing for you and the only thing you really need to do is edit text, maybe edit some colors, maybe move around um, certain segments of the website, uh, perhaps, um, you know, not have to worry about integrating things like Google Analytics and um, Facebook Analytics and all that stuff. And you, you just, it just does it then you are onto something. So there's a lot of work to be done um, because I don't know, especially around the Google Analytics and the, the Facebook Analytics, if that can be automated yet. But I mean, it is something that we've been thinking about and something that we're working towards. So yeah, that's it. So this is, this is day one. Um, this is the first episode, not really day one um, of, of this, ep of this, program and i'm really looking forward to sharing with you what happens coming in the in the, in the future because not only that um i've also like i said right in the beginning is that i've got a massive passion for sports um, being an olympian i have always loved sports it's I, I i love the spirit of the olympic games and i love people that are willing to do whatever it takes to travel around the world to um, do their craft. And there's always a special place in my heart for, for people that do that, regardless of whether it's sports or not, but especially in the sporting realm. And what I've, what I've been doing like on the side for many years, um, going on four years um, up until the lockdown, um, the, the international lockdowns that, that, was, that has been happening, is that I started and um, I stopped and now I'm starting again in selling um, equipment. So it's, it's selling sports equipment, selling sports clothing, and predominantly in the martial arts space. And I'm going back to that because as things are opening up out here in South Africa, and as I've built better connections with my manufacturers out in Pakistan, it's allowed me the opportunity to really look at this on a worldwide perspective and start to sell equipment right around the world. And that is really exciting to me. So on the back of that, we'll be starting a Story Advantage, um, well, the Story Edge podcast, which is going to be the sports edition and really connect with a, a ton of people in that space and really help people get the best quality that they can for the best, best possible price. Um, and really we're killing in the prices in, 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 in South Africa and I know in Africa and, and I know we can kill it in Europe, especially. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that, that is basically what's, what's happening with me at this moment in time. This is what I'm doing. So I'm going to be documenting as well, my process of helping of, of, of building the funnel for, um, for the sporting side. Um, and really it's going to be built on my personal name predominantly because I'm not going to, I'm not really going to try and brand this thing or create anything, like anything bigger than that. I'm really going to do almost affiliate marketing on that side of the world where I'm going to be creating content, becoming an ambassador of the brand that will, um, that will be selling the stuff and people can go there and buy. So, 
that is really going to be the deal. Um, and, you know, when people buy through my links, when people go with, with my referral, they're going to get massive, massive discounts. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you're in the sporting world as well, you know, go and check out the Story Edge podcast sports edition. And, uh, you know, you'll be able to connect with me. If you're a sports person, connect with me as well. You know, just let me know so that I can um, have you on my show. I'm, I'm currently looking for people and, and trying to get that, that uh, podcast running, which will be very, 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 very soon. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to be building this. I'm going to be building this application because it's going to be able to help everybody. Um, sports clubs, sporting teams, anybody who wants to be able to build their business online, they need to have a funnel. You need to be able to have something that com- connects with people. They probably have a website. So then you probably need to grow your list. And then what you have to do after that is communicate with that list. And there's no, you, you, there's just certain components that you need with those to be able to make it successful. And my plan with my, with my application is to make that really easy for people because they don't want to worry about those things. They just really want to worry about, is the message actually connecting? Is it really my brand? Is this really talking about me? And does it work? That's it. So yeah, I just wanted to share this and I'm really looking forward to the next week. I'll see you guys every single Monday and share with you some of the tidbits of the learnings up until this point. But in the meantime, make sure you have a BHAG. And if you do, you know, drop a comment and let me know what is your BHAG? What is that thing? You know, because, and don't be afraid to share it. You know, I'm sharing this with you right now. And so many people are so scared to share what's really inside them. And that's only really because you don't really believe you can, you can get it. You can do what you actually want. And I had to overcome that. And now I'm sharing it with everybody. And, you know, and the more I share it, I even see some people have already done some of the things that I'm planning to do, which is so awesome because it allows me to see what's working and what's not. Um, how well they've integrated it and, and how well is it working and, and how can mine be different? So the BHAG is really critical. Focus on that. The next thing is then start to look at who you are. Um, two places that I suggest you go, go to World Dynamics, links below. Go to um, a man called Dr. John D. Martini. He's going to help you with a thing called values. And when you know your values, when you know what really gets you going, what what because the, the, the concept there is that you know what you what you really want is already in your life. You're already practicing those things. So if you clear on what that is and you change your whole life to make that to, to focus on those things, the your actual primary values, everything will start to change. Things will start to come towards you instead of you having to push it all the time. So that's another thing you need to go and have a look at. Um, The other thing is, yeah, I'm going to share with you about around the the balance scorecard. There's going to be really awesome stuff. So, so, you know, if you, if you've got a business, just let me know where you, what's going on. And so don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to connect with me at any time. Thank you very much for watching.